Leonardo AI now has not only the real-time canvas editor, but now real-time impaving. So you can use AI to edit your images. This includes your photos, images, or even AI art. You can edit live on this platform. So today I'm gonna to show you how it works. So log into your Leonardo AI account, and if you don't have one, there's a link in the description. We head down to real-time canvas. Now to start off with, we've got our basic canvas, which we've done before. There's a full tutorial link to in the description below that I've done on this particular canvas. I'll also pop a video card at the end of this video. But essentially this is where we can type in a prompt such as a red monster and draw some cool monstery type thing in here and it'll use AI to create that image. But what I really wanna do is bin that because what we're looking at today is the in-painting feature. If I head over to in-paint, it'll actually move that image over for me to in-paint. But I'm going to bin that one again because we're going to start fresh. So this is where I can start to add images and start my in-painting. So I've got nothing on here. I'm going to come over to add image at the top. Now you see at the top, we can upload images. And even above that in the tabs, you can use your generations or you can even go to the community feed to get some images to use. For now, I'm going to use what I see on the screen here. And I can click on this image of this building and click confirm. And that's starting to look pretty good. I don't like the way it's framed up. So what I'm going to do is I can resize it. But if I grab a side handle, all it does is stretch it. And I don't want to actually stretch my image. So I'm going to actually go over here. And there's undo and redo here as there is with any other platform or program. I hit undo. You can also use control Y for redo or control Z for undo if that helps. But if you want to resize it, grabbing the corner will keep the proportions while you move it. Now, I haven't entered a prompt yet. I'm basically just gonna start drawing and show you some of these sort of bits and pieces. Now, if I decide I want to add to this image, what I wanna do is grab my brush tool. I can grab my select tool to select things and move them around. But for now, I wanna grab my brush tool, pick a color. I'm just gonna go with like a white color, bring my in-paint strength down a bit. Yours should be about the center if you've never used this before. And I'm just gonna draw some columns and things on the building. Now at the moment, that doesn't look very good. So I can just type in here, a gray building in brutalism style. So it's added those in and kind of done something with them, but nothing too extreme. It's pretty simple. If I move that in-paint strength up, I can give Leonardo AI more cre creativity. So let's pump it up to full. And you can see it's basically removed them. I can bring it back a little bit, find that sweet spot where we get something on there. I can bring it down to zero and you're essentially getting what you've drawn. So. Finding the sweet spot of in-paint strength is one of the, the areas that probably requires the most work. We've got this here and it looks pretty basic, but it helps to add a little more detail in. So if I click on this and come down to a bit of gray, bring the brush down a little bit, I can start to add in a little bit more shadow. And because this is a very high contrast image with very deep shadows, I'm gonna to go to a very black color, bring that down again and just kind of draw in some areas to give it that 3D look. So you can see how we've got these cool columns here. And again, I can add some of that yellow in there that we see, just little bits and pieces of it. And you can see how we're able to sort of add and create with this image. And what I can also do is just say, lights on in the windows, and I can start to draw, even draw a little bit more yellow in, bringing that brush size. Now I can bring this brush size right up bang, get a real big brush, but I'm gonna undo that. Or I can bring it down and get a little bit more refined. Find that right size. Come up with a white. I have found that the brighter the difference between what you're doing and what you're actually uh, trying to achieve, quite often adds a bit more to it. So it has actually redone some of these doors, but it hasn't, done a, it hasn't really added the lights in there. I'm gonna play with that in-paint strength again to get different results. It has, hasn't added those in, but it still looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go for a super bright yellow this time and just draw that in nice and bold. I can say yellow lights on the windows. So now we've got a little bit more showing up now. Another thing I wanna point out is if I go up to add my image up here, I have a transparent PNG of Earth. If I click on that and confirm, I can pop that on the page. I can also resize that so I can actually layer various objects onto the canvas and get some nifty effects. At the moment, the earth is in front of this tower here. I can use these arrows to actually shuffle it back 
so it sits behind and then move until we get a good result where it's behind one of these columns. So you can actually shuffle items back and forth with these arrows. And I'd like to mention that has been added to the live canvas as well. So as you're drawing, you can select any object using this select tool here and you can move it around. You can resize it. You can move it back and make adjustments to how you've laid things out or move it back to the front. Another thing you can do, so we've covered the fact you can grab the brush, change the color and the brush size, but we also have this eraser tool here, which I can use, but it essentially erases away from the entire image, which is not what we want right now. But it's good to know that is there because what we can do is take this building image in the background with our select tool and we can just move that out of the way. And then we can grab our eraser and if we want to, we can even erase part of the earth if we decided we wanted to do that. Grab our selection and move this back up and try and position it in a good spot again. And then we can even add, I can draw on here and I can actually make some changes to earth itself and highlight it a bit if I wanted to do that as well. So you can see how simple it is to add bits and pieces to this image. So I've got this image here and if I'm kind of happy with it, what I can do is go up to Instant Refine. And I click that, it will use AI to refine that image and introduce more detail. But what if I'm not happy with that result? I do have some more options for the styling. For one, I can change my prompt settings over here, such as the guidance, I've got it on high quality, but We've played with the strength, but what about different profiles? I've got dynamic. What if I change it to cinematic and refine? We get this result here, and it does refine some details, but keeps the general base of the image. I can change it to concept art, refine. And we get this more artistic concept art look with someone, looks like someone down here in the foreground. So you can change the style of your photo, but still have it be very much true to that original photo. And you can try any one of these, see what results you can get. Okay, lastly, I'll try environment. And we've got this cool image here, but dynamic does seem to be the best in this particular instance. So I'll switch to dynamic, instant refine, and we've got our image. So. This is very early on, so there's still a lot happening with this platform and with this tool. So you're not always gonna get the exact results you want at this stage, but it's definitely fun to play with. And the more detail you can actually introduce yourself here, the better the results are gonna be on the right. So once I'm happy with that image, I can upscale it. I can also go to my settings here and change the refiner strength. We'll put it on low, smooth mode and hit upscale. And now when I exit the editor, I head down to my personal feed and you can see my image here. It has kept an incorrect prompt. It's kept it as a red monster for some reason, probably because that's what we had on the live canvas. So just be aware of that. That is not the correct prompt, but it's a pretty cool image overall. It's a very sci-fi vibe to it. Now the good news is I've exited. If I come back to real-time canvas, I have returned and it's sort of come back to a bit of a funny state here, but if I go over to draw, it has kept my red monster there. So I'm gonna actually delete this. I'm gonna type in a gray building. I'm gonna add an image, go to my generations, choose my upscale and confirm. And I can then also take it a step further by using this as something of an image prompt for live to see what kind of results I can get there. Once again, hitting instant refine. So you can continue to take things a bit of a step further. Now, like I said, there's some funny things happening when I come back to that. So you don't really want to leave the impainting and then come back at this stage while they're figuring that out. But overall, it's a pretty cool option. I really like this imagery. I think it actually turned out pretty cool. And like I said, if I paint onto this, I can select, grab, and now even on draw, I can move this up and down and change the order of it, which is pretty cool. And then if I want to, I can delete, I can go output to input, and move that there. I can then come over back to InPaint and back and forth with whatever it is I'm doing. I can get output to input again and continue to shuffle that back and forth. So definitely check out that feature with Leonardo AI. Like I said, it's still very early on, so have a play with it and see what you think. Otherwise, if you wanna know how to use live or real-time Canvas, I will pop a tutorial on the screen right now that you can check out that'll walk you through how to use that and uh, give you a better idea of what you can do with this powerful platform. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great day.